Hello, good evening everyone. My name is Deepti Thakur. I am a clinical psychologist at Nai Disha Mental Health Clinic and I am also the founder of Nai Disha Mental Health Clinic. I am also a PhD scholar under Dr. Shima Ali Ma'am at Department of Psychology, Jamia Millia Islamia University. Thank you everyone for joining me today at this Facebook Live. Our topic for today's uh, discussion is how to increase your child's memory, focus and concentration. It is very essential for us as parents, caregivers, siblings, teachers, okay, and counselors, I would say, to work in collaboration with the child. We should not only work on the behavioral aspects of the child, but also pay much attention in working on the cognitive aspects of the child. Okay, so with certain kind of simple games or certain kind of simple changes in our daily routine life, it is very, very beneficial for the child to grow, not only uh, physically, mentally, but also socially and psychologically. Okay, so today we are going to take up certain ways of how to help the child to increase their memory, focus and concentration however we will be also be talking about uh, other things like uh, SR which means self-regulation or inhibition behavior so all those things also we'll be talking about so now exclusively if we talk about children who are around or infants I would say rather who are around 6 to 18 years now for somebody who is 6 to 18 years old how can the parents encourage these children and what all kind of activities should they do with the child which helps them to build this executive functioning so executive functioning might sound like a very complicated or complex term but if i have to define it simply it means working on the attention concentration planning decision making all these kinds of uh, you know qualities i would say in a child so memory focused attention concentration and uh, self-regulation all these things if together they are put they are known as executive functions or in a very simple language cognitive skills you can also call them cognitive skills okay so what should we do if our child is around 6 to 18 months old at that time certain kind of activities encourage infants to focus attention use working memory and practice basic self-control skills during this stage of development, infants are actively developing their core executive function and self-regulation. So this time, since this time all, uh, only at this uh, age of 6 to 18 months, if we start working with our child, definitely we will be in a very, very good position to help this child build this kind of executive skills or cognitive skills from the beginning. So how should we as parents or as caregivers behave? So we need to be very, very supportive and hold responsive interaction with adults. Okay, so we should encourage uh, such kind of supportive and responses, responsive interaction with our adult, with our uh, infants or whatever age group your child belongs to. Here specifically, I'm talking about six to eighteen months, but that has to be true to any age group. That as uh, parents, we have to be very, very interactive and responsive to the child what kind of games or activities should we do at this younger age so repetition helps infants remember and manage their own behavior to fit to the game rules so whatever activities you are planning with the child at this age group make sure that it has a component of repetition for example a game like peekaboo or hide and find okay that kind of games so very very uh, you know these are very common games hindi mein jaise hum kehte hain luka chupi okay very commonly played games uh, all over the world i would say so these kind of games really help children to uh, to enhance their working memory and also you know they challenge the babies to remember who is hiding and they also practice basic self control skills when they play these kind of games like hide and seek or peekaboo okay another game which is very very good in building of uh, this uh, executive skills or working memory is patter cake okay so basically in patter cake what they have to do they have to place their hands like this and you know you need to clap 
okay so this game not only includes repetition but it also includes some kind of rhymes or you know rhythm so this practicable rhythm that ends with the stimulating yet with a stimulating yet expected surprise are well loved so these are the kind of games which are very very excellent uh, when you want to build your infants working memory then we are talking about the other kind of games which they can play are the hiding games so what kind of hiding games are these so like hide a toy under a cloth and encourage the infant to look for it so when they make use of these kind of challenge challenges like uh, you know they have to search for it at the first place and then if they don't find it there they need to think about where are they going to search so as the child remembers what was there and mentally tracks the move he or she exercises working memory so all these kind of games are actually exercises of working memory for the child another important thing which we which we need to highlight here is our conversation with the child how and you know what kind of conversations we hold with our children so simply talking with an infant is a wonderful way to build attention working memory and self control with younger infants starts by following the infant's attention and naming loud the things holding his or her attention so even if you call their name they are going to look at you even if you hold something and you call that thing with the name they are going to look at that thing so these little things also help us to sustain attention in infants as infants get older pointing out and talking about interesting objects or events can help them learn to focus their attention on something the that the adults has identified so whenever you are introducing something new in their environment you can point out at that thing and you can describe that thing to them so these also helps them to retain that kind of information and memory enhances in children another kind of method for doing it for, you know these kind of uh, things for infants who are as young as you know 6 months to 18 months it could be imitation or copying games so when they imitate they have to keep track of their actions or your actions and remember them wait for their turn and then recall what you did in doing so they practice attention working memory as well as self control also games like simple role playing now what is role playing in role playing what we do basically is or it can be simply done by parents at home is that you are you know you are acting out something and the child is also observing you and acting out in the same way so that is simple role playing okay so you take sometimes you take role as a you can try reverse role playing also what is reverse role playing simply means that the parent becomes the uh, child and the child becomes the parent and then they start talking to each other probably that way the child will be in a better position to understand the perspectives plan or do any kind of decision making so role playing and reverse role playing imitation or copying games are definitely a very good measure of building the cognitive skills of the child whether it is attention focus memory or planning or decision making so these kind of games really help to attain these goals another activity which can be done is taking turns with any activity that interests the child such as picking up the toys or probably you know dusting or any other household work so these kind of activities should also be practiced at home so that the child understand that what kind of planning and decision making and sequencing activities these are kinds of sequencing activities also which also helps the children to remember what was the first task then after that what was the second so you know they form chaining through chaining method they are forming all the complex behaviors they are putting little little tasks together and they learn how to form it as a complete behavior okay so they do it both ways mentally also and behaviorally also so these kind of activities also enhance the cognitive skills of the child another game uh, that the child can practice is imaginary play okay so imaginary play what really happens or what we do in imaginary play is that they imagine that you know they they have certain uh, imaginary friends or those kind of some imaginary cartoon character and they are you know doing dialogues with them so what is this person going to say what am i going to say next these kind of games also help in 
you know planning decision making and also selective attention self control the most important point here which you know is uh, very very prominent in these kind of game is self control the child knows when it is my turn to speak so when we are doing any kind of games when we are playing any kind of games in which the child has to take turns at that point of time they understand self control now it is my turn now it is this other person's turn now it is father's turn or mother's turn you know that kind of taking turns help them to practice self control behavior or inhibitory behaviors okay so these kind of training is also very very important at a young age another thing which we can do with our children is finger plays now whenever they are singing songs or they are chanting something with simple hand motions it is a lot of fun for the infants and it also helps them to develop self control and working memory okay what else can we do for children who are around 18 months to 36 months so children who are 18 months to 36 months parents of those children can provide them with certain active games like providing many materials and opportunities to try out new skills such as throwing and catching the ball walking a balance beam running up and down jumping a sectra set of simple rules to follow for added working memory and inhibition challenges for example takes turn running to the finish line and back so these kind of uh, you know activities will also help in working mem memory and inhibition challenges so they understand simple rules of the game and also enhance their executive or cognitive functioning another game which they can play at this particular age of 18 to 36 months is uh you know toddlers they are toddlers basically so older toddlers can enjoy simple imitation games such as follow the leader or follow 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 so most of the time you must have seen your children playing okay one person one child is going to follow all the you know is going to follow the teachers or these children are going to follow the parents you know so these kind of games are also very very important so you know when we are introducing these games to our children we some uh, you know somehow most of us don't know that these are are the kind of games which are very very helpful in their uh, cognitive skill building we are just playing it for fun most of the time so did i before i got uh, you know insight into this but now we understand that each and every game has its own uh, uh, benefits it's helping our child to build certain kind of cognitive skills which will be helpful to, to them in the future also so not only they have to learn but they ha also have to practice right so this follow 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 game really helps them these are great tests of uh, working memory as well as attention and inhibition inhibition is another word for the word stop simply so they have to know when they have to stop when they have to go and they have to pay attention to the instruction so that they know when to stop and when to go so these are the kind of the games which are very very helpful for both attention inhibition and working memory to enhance all these three skills another kind of game is games that require active inhibition can be fun too like freeze although uh, don't expect to freeze without a few reminders so another kind of game here is you know that freeze game so how do we play this freeze game with the child or you must have uh, you know heard about musical statue yeah as soon as the music stops you have to become a statue so these are inhibition or inhibitory games that they have to stop as soon as the music stops so these kind of games are very very important because at this time all the executive functionings or cognitive skills are working simultaneously right so the working memory is also uh, on action at action and then your decision making is that when you have to stop you have to judge also at the same time you have to understand the rules of the game also at the same time so all these functioning so the child is paying attention on a lot of cognitive skills at that point of time or you know doing it like from one skill then shifting to the other then the other so these kind of you know using all the skills in an integrated manner is something what the child does when they are playing these kind of games another thing is conversation and storytelling so simply watching and narrating their play can be a great way to help very young children understand how language can describe their actions as children get older questions can be asked such as 
what will you do next or i see you want to put the ball inside the jar is there another way to do that so you know when you ask these kind of questions so definitely the child is going to think about it that what could be the other alternative or you know what could be the answer to this how am i supposed to solve these kind of problems right so these are also helping in planning and decision making then these comments help children pause to reflect on what they are trying to do so if they are working with some method and that is not working then you know we need to tell the child okay you stop for a while stop the activity and then you think could there be another way out of this rather than what we are trying you know you need to encourage and motivate the child throughout the process now how what they try has worked and how to plan their next move okay so tell stories about shared events can be a great way to reflect on these experiences talking about feelings are also important either by labeling children's feeling as they notice for example it looks like you are really angry right now or we telling the story of the time of the child becomes upset so not only do we have to uh, you know help them with those kind of games we also have to engage them in the conversation with us so that they can be able to help we are able to help them to do that kind of problem solving also as well as identify their feelings and they are simultaneously managing their feelings as well okay then another kind of you know what other kind of games we can play with children is matching or sorting games now what are these kind of games ask child to play a sorting game in which you take turns sorting objects by size shape or color engage older toddlers in a silly sorting game such as putting small shapes in a big bucket and big shapes in a small bucket children tend to put like with like uh, so a change in challenging okay so these kind of challenges you know smaller challenges you can give them and when they are able to overcome these challenges you need to reinforce their behavior okay so we will also be talking more about reinforcement what kind of reinforcement we can give and how these reinforcement work for the child right also some kind of simple puzzles which require attention to shapes and color so you, lot of uh, you must be uh, buying products like uh, you know which are simple puzzles or such kind of blocks which have blocks you know these kind of games are very very beneficial to build the child's uh, cognitive functioning so adults can ask children to think about what shape or color they need where they might put a certain piece or where they might put the piece if it doesn't fit there okay so this what are we trying to uh, you know build upon the planning skills so you know there they are there are different different blocks i am sure all all the parents must have seen those kind of games in which they need the child need to fit the appropriate block whether the appropriate circle or the appropriate triangle so if they are able to fit it means that they are able to plan that okay this could be the right kind of place for that shape so they understand the form what kind of you know form is there what kind of shape is there and also fit it together so their planning and decision making process enhances and they are paying attention to the kind of rules which are there in the game right another uh, set of activities which we can do for somebody for children who are around 3 to 5 years old so ways to support high level imaginary play now imaginary play as i have just introduced earlier so what could be the other ways in which we can support that kind of imaginary play is through reading books going on field trips and use videos to make sure that children know enough about the scenario and role to support pretend play so if you have to do pretend play with the child if they need to pretend so we need to you know give them some kind of reference so basically they are observing the parents but at the same time sometimes they also observe see they, if they have to play some kind of character then how do they learn about it either through reading books or doing some kind of you know research on it that is also reading books through books or through internet or watching similar videos of the part which they are supposed to play so these kind of uh, activities help them to understand things better and also execute them so provide a varied set of props and toys to encourage this type of play 
reusing familiar objects in the new way also practices cognitive flexibility so uh, apart from attention memory uh, inhibition planning decision making another set of cognitive skills which helps the child is cognitive flexibility so the same thing can be used in multiple ways that it what that is what it means in simple language a, a same you know a same tool or a same instrument can be used can have multi functions and that is what they learn when we help them to engage in such kind of play in which they use the one particular object for two three different functions so they at that time we are building the cognitive functioning or we are building the cognitive flexibility of the child that this particular thing can be used in multiple ways right so also allow children to make their own uh, props so it's not necessary that every time we buy the props from outside so it's good that you are encouraging them to make their own props so these kind of very simple activities also help the child to do certain kind of cognitive decisions you know so they take cognitive decisions like which color to use what kind of material should i use so this is more of planning right they are planning in the uh in the scenario okay what color i use which you know what kind of material should i use do i have to make it this way for referencing they are going to see the videos they are going to read the books how they have done it in that way so all these kind of activities help to build decision making memory so they remember okay this is something which i saw in that video and so they practice it attention when they are looking at all these kind of things which are which they need to uh, you know um, hold on to build something new so that kind of uh, functioning is very very essential for the child we have to see most of the time how do we work with child in the clinics also we work mostly with the child through play therapy we give them different different kinds of game different different kinds of props to understand the functioning of the child how they are planning how they are you know putting things together what are they able to see certain things in a gestalt way so gestalt way means as a whole okay so are they seeing it as a whole thing or are they only able to see it in bits and pieces and parts and not able to understand the complete picture okay so these are the kind of things which uh, we can train the child from very beginning and it could be very very helpful for the child now when we talk about you know other kind of playing so you know play plans can be a good way to organize play designed to build self regulation so definitely their self regulation another set of games which we can play with the child is the movement challenge okay or the songs and the games can be used here setting challenges for children such as obstacle courses and games that encourage complex motions okay so we need to set them some kind of complex games like skipping balancing okay when children are trying new and difficult activities they need to focus on attention monitor and adjust their actions so they don't only have to use the attention but also they have to monitor and adjust or you know adapt their actions and persist to achieve a goal encourage attention control through quieter activities that require children to reduce stimulation and focus attention such as using a balance beam or yoga poses that include slow breathing so not only do we have to always activate them keep them activated with active games but there is another way of doing it and you know we should be using mixture of both the ways the other way of doing is is through you know helping them in practice slow breathing meditation so they can pay attention on the breath when they are taking in the breath when they are releasing it out so those kind of uh, activities will also be helpful to focus attention now play some music and have children dance really fast then really slow freeze dance sometimes they can practice that also and it can be made more difficult by asking children to freeze in a particular position when the music stops children must inhibit action and shift their attention to the picture to imitate the person or the character which is depicted right so these are the kind of games they can play so here you can see i am focusing a lot on different different kinds of game okay so here in this particular uh, you know way what i am telling you so i have in this i have told you about two kind of games one is the movement challenge in which we are activating the child a lot and 
and the other one is just the opposite that you are asking the child to practice slow breathing meditation yoga okay so we also have to understand what is the temperament of the child what kind of games do they enjoy okay and practice other games as well also we should encourage our children to play more of uh, you know matching sorting games and quiet games also you know it should be a mixture of everything it's not that always we have to keep them active it keep them running and jumping so it has to be a mixture of both quiet games as well as the active movement based games okay so games that requires players to remember the location of a particular card are great at exercise in working memory so another game for working memory is you know playing cards okay so those not uh, the other one the other cards i'm here specifically talking about uno cards or you know any kind of card games for children specifically then games in which the child can match playing cards either by suit or number are also good at practicing cognitive flexibility so uh, one very simple kind of game which you can play with children is that you have made four cards okay and two decks of card of like 64 cards or whatever 80 cards and then on the basis of shape okay so one is triangle one is circle one is square and one is a star so on those four shapes you keep it in front of the child and then that uh, deck of cards which you have made 20 cards 25 cards you tell the child that on the basis of you know some things on the basis of some rule you have to match the cards if you can match the cards properly okay if you are matching it right i am going to say right if you are not matching it correctly i will give you an indicator that this is not the right kind of match so every time here in this game every time the child is trying to match a card they are going to apply or think of at least some different rule so if they if this person if this child has uh, you know tried to match on the basis of shape okay and um, probably it is not on the basis of shape sometimes the card is matching on the basis of color so the child next have to think that apart from uh, matching it on the shape it can also be matched on the on a, another principle of color so they are able to change or adapt to the current situation so this is kind of you know cognitive flexibility they are practicing if one alternative of a one rule doesn't work another rule can be applied okay so i, I would like to explain this game uh, once more for the parents so what you can do is you can ask the child to make four cards okay or you can make four cards best is to do it with the child four cardboards or four you know a4 size sheet cards on one it is a circle another uh, shape third shape and fourth shape so four different shapes now you can create yourself a deck of cards okay with different different kinds of shape so now i have to tell them that now you need to join these uh, you know you have to match these cards on what principle whether you have to join it on the basis of color or shape or numbers that you will not tell the child okay so every time they are matching they have to understand themselves that okay now i have matched four cards on color and now my mother is saying that this card doesn't match maybe something has changed okay so every time you give them a cue that now it is not matching it means they have to change some kind of rule okay so that are the kind of games which you which helps your child to build cognitive flexibility okay so they are paying attention at the same time attention and concentration they are focusing on the game and they are also practicing certain kind of planning and decision making everything is come into this game and also of course cognitive flexibility right now physical games uh, that require attention and quick responses help children practice attention and inhibition okay and uh, singing in rounds is a challenge for older children that requires use of working memory and inhibition so crossword puzzles singing you know you have to recall what was that kind of song what were the lyrics so all these simple games and activities also help the children to build the cognitive skills right sequencing another kind of thing is uh, which helps the child is uh, sequencing so the link between sequencing and concentration is a strong one so following recipes setting the table putting things in alphabetical orders are great activities for children who have concentration difficulty so if your child have some kind of uh, you know concentration difficulties or less attention in those cases you can help them 
through making them follow sequencing activities so see it is not what uh, kind of tips that we give here that okay you can do sequencing activities follow recipe ask them to you know set the table but it only comes or the benefits you will only see once the child is practicing so they have to do it every single day at least two times or three times so with practice only those kind of activities will be a habit for the child and definitely you are going to see the difference another thing is you know you should tell your child to just sit on the chair so that this game involves challenging your child to sit in the chair without moving or fidgeting to see how long he can do it another concentration improvement game in this category is statue okay through repeated play and the child's brain is exercised and challenged which strengths the mind body connection so you can challenge them so the, the children you know the kind of children who are very very fidgety or who are just moving around the whole room and do not sit it's very difficult for the parent to make them sit even for a while for 2 minutes so you have to challenge you can you know start it as a game okay now we are playing a game right now and you need to sit on this couch for another 3 minutes you know those kind of time durations you can put for 3 minutes okay so if you sit on this couch for 3 minutes you earn 2 points you know something like that you can introduce and uh, when you earn around 40 points or 50 points together then it can be exchanged in response to something okay so what is the something has to be predetermined it doesn't have to be you know anxiety provoking now what is the something which mom is talk talking about okay so this is also a kind of you know Uh, behavior modification technique token economy it is called so in token economy what we usually do is whatever behaviors that we need to change uh, in the child we attach those kind of behaviors with certain kind of point or point system so every time they collect some kind of points those points can be exchanged in response to some kind of reinforcers those reinforcers could be primary reinforcers like uh, you know um, praise appreciation from the parent or those could be secondary reinforcers like some kind of you know uh, food items or uh, some uh, you know some uh, material gain okay some bat ball whatever the child demands for so you know that kind of thing but instead of the you know thing of asking that i am asking my parent you know that kind of things come into more of earning it so the child is also under this kind of uh, impression that i am earning these points which i can exchange for this particular thing so the primary and the secondary reinforcers have to be identified before hands before hand when we are starting this kind of token economy system for the child okay so this works wonderfully now another kind of thing is spotting the difference so these helps in making your child concentration concentrate for long and help to improve focus as your child looks into the details okay so you have to you know there are games like this what are the six differences it's there in the newspapers also you have to spot what kind of differences there in both these games and uh, detect and uh, you know tell me so these kind of uh, games are also very very helpful in uh, building attention another kind of game which can help in building attention is you know cutting on the a and f alphabet so what you can give them you can just give them a any newspaper any one or two paragraphs and in that paragraphs they have to cut two alphabets okay so they can decide what alphabets they want to cut a h a f whatever alphabets they have to cut cut and every time they cut they have to note down the timing so first time it took me around 1 minute to cut all the a and f from this paragraph second time the time will decrease and the third trial the time will further decrease so every time because the child's child is always you know trying to focus more to find these two alphabets in that whole paragraph okay so these are some kind of very very simple exercises which can be used to increase attention another thing is uh, you know what's missing you can ask them what is missing in a particular you know read a sequence of numbers alphabets or words from their favorite rhyme but here's the catch skip a number so you have to skip a number or skip a word so they can identify that you know what is missing that kind of a thing so when they play what is missing kind of game definitely to identify what is missing they need to pay more attention so when we are playing any 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 of these different kinds of game we are increasing the attention level of the child okay memory game also you can play with them 
that you know when whenever they are trying to memorize something then did they need to write it write it back okay what other kinds of uh, things can we do apart from these games now i've told you a number of games what other kind of things we should do to enhance this attention focus concentration and other executive skills so we need to prepare a distraction free environment some children respond well in an environment that is soothing and calming but other children may strive for an environment that has lot of hustle and bustle so as i uh, told you earlier also that we need to take care of the child's temperament what kind of behavior the child holds and what are the kind of things that the child enjoys to do now understanding what kind of environment your child prefers to study is the first step to increase the concentration level so even when they are studying you need to understand that what kind of environment they want to study in so the ambience what kind of ambience it is is it soft instrumental music so some children might be able to study in that soft instrumental level of music but other children for studying for paying attention for you know increasing concentration they might require pin drop silence so we need to identify what kind of environment our child is comfortable in while they are working or while they are studying okay gadgets we need to limit the time of gadget watching so what are ga whatever gadgets they are watching it's uh, see this is a very very i would say uh, it's it's happening a lot that most of the time the children have started using a lot of ga gadgets especially at this time when even the classes and all are happening on the gadgets so at this time also you need to really uh, encourage these activities which i have initially told you like uh, cutting the letters from the newspaper green sorting also okay so and more of paper pencil activities playing ludo playing chess all those kind of indoor activities rather than they playing video game all the time so we need to limit the gadget time of the child then we need to also focus on the routine of the child so whenever the child uh, comes to us for uh, you know any kind of therapy or otherwise also your child needs to follow a kind of fixed schedule okay so of course now fixed here i don't mean that it cannot be flexible it has to, it can be flexible it has to be flexible but somewhat a brief uh, you know some kind of structure should be there in the schedule it should not be very very um, you know hey and way that sometimes the child is doing it sometimes the child is not doing it so a fixed uh, kind of schedule helps the child to concentrate better also they do not spend a lot of time thinking what to do next when it is all, already predetermined okay so what we usually do is with the, like i told you about the token economy system we make a schedule and we put all kind of activities in the schedule and you know one side we put the time okay so we make it like a table one side is the time the second side is the activity and the third side is according to the date if the person is following or not following the child is following or not following so every time they are following we are they are getting two points and they will be able to collect uh, the predetermined points which can be exchanged for a predetermined reinforcer so these kind of activities you know these kind of uh, charts really work with the child another way to increase the concentration and you know keep your child calm and alert is through giving them some kind of breaks in between whenever they are studying they need to take a break okay so if the child is studying continuously for 1 hour 2 hours now here we are talking about a little older ones right so 1 hour 1 or 2 hours or something and then we are not giving them child back to back they are getting lot of homework so i understand that children who are in class you know uh, ukg kg first even they are given a lot of activities and homework from school and that takes a lot of time in the time table but you know those kind of activities and all when, whenever they are doing they can take some kind of break in between so this kind of break how to, should they take you know these kind of breaks so they can do the activity for like 10 15 minutes then for 5 minutes they can do some other activity they can go around the room drink water you know uh do some kind of stretching exercises and then come back and studying okay and every time they are studying they should not only pay attention to reading or writing but also in recalling so after 15 minutes or 20 minutes of study then you give them a 5 minute break 
then after them five minutes you ask them to recall see what we are doing here is that we are only inputting you know doing that input 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 learning learning and learning but we should always uh, help the child to practice to you know that recall also we never most of the time i would not say never here but most of the time we do not practice recall so we need to ask the child also okay from whatever you have learned what do you remember right now okay so whether it is in the verbal form whether it is in the written form so that practicing of recall is also something which requires attention which requires brainstorming for the child to bring the back uh, bring back that information that he or she has learned okay also divide bigger task into smaller tasks so we need not tell the child a very very complex task and definitely it would be very difficult for them to understand it and sometimes they may just mix up with the instructions also so here we have to tell the child to break the bigger task into the smaller task and we also need to give them instructions in such a way step 1 do this step 2 do this step 3 do this okay so we have to give them very very smaller uh, you know you have to break a bigger task into the smaller task so when they divide it into small portions it becomes the is them uh, for them easier to remember and easier to implement that kind of task their focus level also increases also we need to understand that uh, that the child gets tired in between right so when the child is coming back has come back from tuition or school we we should introduce this concept of power nap okay so they can take a power nap for 20 minutes 20 minutes power nap would help them to you know regain back their energy and because if the child is always sleepy and drowsy then again they won't be able to uh, pay much attention they are tired very drowsy you know so that is why this power nap things also helps the children to regain back their energy okay also set short time goals for better concentration so here what you can do is set a time limit for a completion of a goal so when we are making that activity schedule or simple words time table what we do is you know we have uh, put in a little bit of time frame from 5 to 6 this is the activity okay so if every 15 minutes you can take a break so which means they can take a break thrice or four times in that one hour thing so that really helps them to concentrate better because at least they are getting a break they can drink water they can do deep breathing exercises or they can just move around the room and then come back and sit and study again okay set up reward system like i just told you you can do it in the form of uh, token economy so that they are also introduced to the concept of earning rather than asking right so that would really help to be uh, to even uh, bring a behavioral change in the child allow time for distraction so the whole time table should not only be built upon what kind of uh, you know activities is necessary for the child but it should be a mixture of both necessary and of the activities that the child enjoys okay so whatever the, your children enjoy and also some kind of activities which they can do together with their family members or parents or uh, siblings so these kind of activities should also have a you know have their its share in your in the time table for your child okay now also as parents we need to understand how to use the energy of your child you have to understand at what time of the day they are more energetic so when they are more energetic at that time you can introduce more of little complex or little difficult kind of task however when they are tired and they are not very you know uh, what do you say their the fatigueability has come in in those kind of situations simple task could be understood so whenever you are designing a time table in negotiation with your child so uh, as parents we only don't have to make a time table for our child but we also have to sit with them and it is more of a team activity so they should also understand and they will also keep telling you that i want to put this and i don't want to put that okay so whenever you are talking to them give them a rational okay we can put this for half an hour and then we can put the other activity also for half an hour so half an hour half an hour both you can do so you know we should become in this should happen in a negotiable way rather than the parent is making a time table and giving it to the child okay so they are also planning and they are also doing decision making while making this kind of activity okay another thing which they can do is they can try deep breathing and you know imaginary exercises okay so deep breathing exercises as i initially also told you yoga and all it really helps 
the child to understand a lot of things okay it helps them to increase their the concentration okay so any questions okay so i could see uh, some of the questions here on the screen i would like to answer them so komal ji has asked that my child has a good memory but his focus is not good how do i manage both his minds get diverted very easily so if he, your child is not able to focus ma'am you uh, i have already told a lot of uh, exercises you know you can watch this video again of course you uh, to uh, increase the attention level that uh, cutting of the you know slashing out a and f or any two alphabet from the you know particular article or from particular paragraph that would help to you know uh, build a focus okay increase attention another way is grain sorting you can give them uh, you know two bigger grains you can give them rajma and kabuli chana mix them together and ask them to sort it okay alag alag karna hai sorting means they have to do it so they have to sort it so when they are sorting it at that time they have to okay yeah so when they are sorting it then every time they are taking less time so they, this is not something that they will only practice once uh my video is not visible i don't know what is the issue but uh, i am still live which means all of you can hear me so i'll uh, keep uh, giving the answer okay so this grain sorting technique or uh, uh cutting out the alphabets you know these are the two kind of uh, good techniques which if practiced regularly can increase the attention of the child yes so ujwala ji has said that my child is 2 years old she has sharp memory and she doesn't stick to one game so definitely ujwala ji if you see i have uh, given here lot of uh, you know activities this is because the child gets uh, bored very easily so all the children get bored very easily they require uh, you know different different kinds of uh, methods to keep their their interest intact into something so you can keep changing these activities in two in each 2 3 days so that will really help your child to increase concentration so rather than only trying one activity for a week's time we can take four activities and do those activities for 15 minutes each so that will also keep the child interested most of the time especially when the child has difficulty in concentration they lose interest into something very very fast and then they don't want to do it and then the whole plan fails actually so if uh, you know they get bored with one particular game you can have you can have different numbers of you know different different kinds of game so if they are bored with the card game then we can shift to the blocks game if they are bored with the blocks game then you can give them this grain sorting rajma or kabuli chana alag alag karo so like this we can you know design a lot of games at home also we really no, uh, don't need to invest a lot of money to you know uh, buy a lot of games uh, definitely some of the games uh, need to be bought like blocks and you know puzzles and all which are really helpful but with household materials also you can do these kind of things so especially newspaper i'm sure all of us must be having old newspapers with us where we can do this okay mm, uh konika ji has said I have 6 years old daughter and she is very bright but she is very short tempered how to make her understand not to behave like this after having a chit chat session with her parents she is understand very well about her bad behavior but suddenly she, she switches this behavior again so basically uh, your child you are talking your daughter is 6 years old so she she firstly she is very small okay we for children who has some kind of maladaptive behaviors like you know they are short tempered or they throw things or they have temper tantrums in those cases how we work with children is that we apply behavior modification like i've already explained in uh, this session that you can put you can make a list of 
two three maladaptive activities like if you you know that short temperedness what she do if she's doing some kind of temper tantrums she's throwing away something or that so every time if that behavior arises then she'll she'll get a you know she'll get a minus 2 so no, you know one should not scold or hit the children however they should understand this uh, system of token token economy that okay every time i do this what am uh, this uh, minus 2 will happen so i it will move me very very far from my goal and every time i do a good activity i behave well i am going to earn some kind of points so when i earn this i am going to get another uh, you know in uh, exchange to this i am going to get a reinforcer so these kinds of methods uh, definitely work with children okay so first what we do is we start with a very you know two act two kind of uh, uh, behavior only so one is short tempered and one is that she greets everyone so one positive and one negative behavior you can start with this method that she understand this concept of the you know getting two points and uh, minus two points so with very small children also so if she doesn't understand this point system you can also do it with the uh, stars you know green star black star so any how many bla black stars has she earned in a week how many golden stars she has earned in the week and what could be you know she can get in exchange of that golden star you know at least if she has got around 10 or 15 golden stars for her good behavior so when we are reinforcing the alternative behavior so instead of uh, so this is a kind of reinforcement technique also so instead of following one uh, you know bad behavior or when we are reinforcing a good behavior so definitely the child is much more uh, inclined towards repeating the behavior which the parent is reinforcing so reinforce the good behaviors so that the intensity or the frequency of the bad behaviors will decrease right another question is okay so shweta ji has said my child is 7 years old he gets bored easily yes ma'am i do understand that children get bored very very easily and that is the reason why whenever i make activity scheduling with the child we try to make activity scheduling in such a point that you know three days it is different and the rest of monday wednesday friday is different and tuesday thursday saturday is different and sunday the child at some point the child has complete autonomy so that you know they feel that kind of identity responsibility to do they what they want to do so you know we make it's better that we make two time tables in negotiation with the child including all the kind of activities which are changing right so that will uh, not lead to the boredom very very easily because there is a change so children they can't stick to one activity at uh, a single time they really need to keep we need to keep introducing different different activities with our child okay madhu parna ji has said my 5 year old has adhd what should i do to build executive functioning in them can you suggest some uh, attention focus memory and sr activities to do with my 5 year old child okay so uh, basically i have told you uh, many of them uh, in this session however there are many many more activities which we can uh, do with the child right so for uh, uh, attention grain sorting you can try with the child that cutting on the letters you can try with the child another thing you can do is you can uh, play certain kind of games in which there are simple rules so they understand inhibitory behavior also you know self regulation also that now it is this person's chance then it is uh, mom's chance then it is papa's chance you know these kind of uh, activities if you if they practice on a daily basis it's going to be very very beneficial for them also on the terms of memory as i told you when you are teaching your child something not only do we have to teach them but most of the time we miss the recall stage so whatever we are teaching them we need to ask them to recall it give them a 5 minute break and then we need to ask them to recall it so every time even before on the next day if they are sitting again to to study you have to first take a feedback that okay whatever we have studied yesterday you just write in points simple four five points what who are we studying what did it mean okay and then we move on to the next topic so these kind of things really uh, help the child okay all right i think uh, okay so minakshi ji has asked uh, one more question 
if a child wants to do only writing and no reading at all how to reinforce okay so when the child is doing definitely we are uh, reinforcing for the writing behavior okay so if the child doesn't want to do reading at all then instead of the writing behavior so this is called differential reinforcement of the alternative behavior so you are not uh, reinforcing on the writing behavior but because that the child is already doing it so we want them to do the reading behavior so you are only reinforcing when the child is reading okay and we need to increase the time of the reading gradually okay so we on the first day we might tell the child to only read for 5 minutes okay first also we need to under uh, understand why the child is not uh, you know very very interested in reading is is it some kind of reading difficulties is it some kind of problem in articulation is it some kind of problem in comprehension so there could be different reasons why this child has you know no interest in reading as a parent as a practitioner it is also our work to identify what are the barriers of not performing a particular kind of behavior right or performing a particular kind of behavior both ways we need to understand the underlying reasons behind it so only when we understand those kind of uh, reasons so every time now you are reinforcing your child reinforce them for reading so so for our uh, you know for the first week you just have to read for 10 minutes twice a day 10 minutes so every time you are reading for 10 minutes so for writing we are getting nothing but if you are reading then you earn two points so every time those you earn those two points and you calculate you know daily like 7 days so 2 points each days 14 14 points so on sundays in exchange of those 14 points this is some kind of reinforcer that you can get okay it could be primary reinforcer it could be secondary primary means more of praise appreciation from the parent because that is something what the children are mostly looking up for right and secondary reinforcers must, must be some kind of food items okay because we have to keep it uh, monetarily or it, you know it should not be a financial burden for the parents also so whatever they enjoy eating at home that uh, you can make once in a week however we should also understand that if we give them those kind of reinforcers otherwise okay if they are getting it uh, on other times of the week definitely those will not be reinforcing to them so that particular thing or food item should only be used once as a reinforcer and not should be given otherwise okay my 8 years old daughter is attention deficit her uh, understanding capability is very less what should i do so uh, basically ma'am in this case we need to uh, firstly why what is the understanding capability first we firstly we need to identify at what level is her understanding capability and uh, determining what is her level you can still do certain kind of intervention with the child like breaking the instructions into small portion giving instructions one by one reinforcing each smaller activity okay so they are so instead of giving reinforcement when the child has completed that activity you can give her reinforcement once she has completed step 1 okay so this is a method of chaining that you have given her reinforcement in step 1 then again in step 2 then again in step 3 and she practices that kind of thing for at least a week or 15 days and then we move on to the other activity so if she has difficulty in understanding the repetition of behavior performing that same behavior again and again and again will really help her to understand as well as with practice she it this kind of behavior will become automatic to her okay all right other questions so uh, okay so i will uh, stop this uh, session here so in case you need any kind of material any kind of you know uh, exclusive books are there e books are there regarding this topic executive functioning in children you can contact me uh, at uh, naidishaclinic@gmail.com okay naidishaclinic@gmail.com you can drop us a mail we will be happy to share material with you and in that kind of books there will be many more activities Uh, due to the paucity of time i could only you know take a certain fraction of it it was uh, very very nice to be a facilitator today at this session i thank you all to be so encouraging and uh, asking all these questions to me
okay anyways if you require any kind of help you can contact me my phone number is also there naidisha clinic we you can contact me personally for any kind of help thank you so much thank you everyone